My name is Anas, and in this video, I'm going to give you guys a quick tutorial with my supplemental ERAS application. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as you know this year, these three specialties, dermatology, general surgery, and internal medicine are giving you the option to provide a supplemental application, meaning you will supplement your original ERAS application. So let's get right into it. You click next and in here you're going to tell them the position that you were doing while you were gaining your experience, what organization you gained it from, the start date, the end date, and if it's ongoing or not. Now one thing, if you guys read the guide, which I'm going to list in the description below, if the position that you are filling is still ongoing, you need to write the date to be either September 29 or September 30th as an end date. I'm not sure why they want us to do that, but do look into the guide and see if it's for the 29th or if it's for the 30th, but that needs to be done if the position is actually ongoing. After that, how often did you participate? If you look in the guide, it'll also tell you what it means to have a daily uh, frequency, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually, etc. The type of research that you gained. So here are all the different options. Now, for me personally, as you can see, most of them were education or training experiences, but it might not hurt to include other things as well, like the research or teaching or even volunteer work if that was significant for you. So once you have those things in, then where did you do it? Location, was it you know US, international? Was it a virtual rotation? What was the setting? Was it an urban setting, a rural setting, multiple settings? And then lastly, did the experience require knowledge of medicine, yes or no? If you answer yes, here's what's going to happen. When you click next, okay, well, when you click next again, it's actually, go or sorry, one more time. When you click next again, it's going to ask you to describe why those experiences were meaningful. And this is only to the ones that you selected yes to on this page right here, okay? So once you've completed that, click next, and then it's gonna ask you for the experiences that you listed, what kind of institution was it? Outpatient, inpatient, community hospital, whatever, right? Did you go to multiple institutions? So select what it is, then you go into patient care, and was it inpatient, outpatient, was it both, or was it not applicable? And then lastly, what kind of training was it? Was it a, you know, a rotation? Was it an internship or an externship? Was it an observership or shadowing where you had no patient uh, or direct patient care? Once you click those, move on to next, and it's gonna ask you about the research experiences. If you didn't click anything with research experiences, you're not gonna see this page. So what kind of research were you involved in? Click it over here. Most likely, I'm assuming for a lot of you, it's gonna be either clinical or translational, or it's gonna be like an epidemiological kind of study. Um, but enter what kind of research it was, move down to the type of research. So it gives you all these options. Was it like a peer reviewed published article? Was it a poster? You know, what was it? In my case, I was just helping recruit uh, participants for the study. So I can't really put any of these here. So I just went for other. If what you worked on got published, then you can put the citation in this section over here. And if that publication resulted in other publications, so for example, let's say it got selected for a poster presentation, right? But then you also got selected for an oral presentation. Well, you put down the citation for your poster presentation here, and then you can, in an additional research outputs, you can click yes, and that's that. Moving on, if you move down, it's going to ask you, you know, what your role was for each section of the study. Were you the lead or were you a, col a collaborator? Just select the one that fits your situation the best. Moving on, describe why your experiences were meaningful to you. Now, the one suggestion that I find is very useful is I write my stuff in bullet points. The reason this is the case is Programs have to go through 
hundreds if not thousands of applications and if you have these chunks of writing and it it's up to you you can write a small paragraph but as long as it's flowy and it fits nice that's good but to make it easier for the reader you could just put it into bullet points and that's what I've done here I've put each of my you know descriptions into bullet points so it's easier for them to read they can quickly glance over it pick out some things that they like and that's it you know you have to keep the other person in mind as well so here you know my five experiences that i had i've definitely included internal medicine internal medicine as much as i could but also like other experiences for example like my surgery experience but how it related to internal medicine so once i have all those you click next it goes into your other experiences tell them why your other experiences were so impactful for that particular specialty so you know it, it it gives you examples you can talk about your family background your financial background community setting educational experiences and just general life experiences that really tie into the specialty you're applying to okay so once you got that we click next and now you decide your geographic preference now these black lines over here tell you which region um, you're basically selecting so for example like let's say you wanted to work in the east north central region right this includes wisconsin illinois indiana ohio and michigan right and then you can see that it's divided over here so you just click down here for that uh, particular location and you can choose up to three of them um, once you choose three it'll give you three separate boxes where you can describe why it is that you want to work in that particular location for example i pick one two three right west south central will see my explanation for why i chose west south central but not my explanation for east south central or the south atlantic and this goes same for each specific region they only get to see the explanation for them but um, other other um, regions don't get to see any explanation at all so i guess in some way they realize that you didn't pick them but at the same time um, they don't know what you wrote personally being an img it's more important for me to gain a great clinical experience, which is why I went for I do not have a division preference. I don't know why anyone would click I do not wish to communicate a division preference. Like, that's just like saying, hey, I don't want to answer this question. So if you're going to not pick a specific region, do this option here. I do not have division preference and explain why. You know, like personally for me, I have no nothing tying me to one specific area. Yeah, are there places that I would like to be at? Sure. But like I said, it's more important for me to gain a well-rounded residency training experience over a geographical location. Next up, um, we talk about urban and rural settings. Do you have a preference or do you not have a preference? Do you have a slight preference? Now, one of the questions that comes up is, okay, well, since you have no preference, or if you have no preference, then you should just click no preference, right? And then that means that you're open to either a rural program or an urban program. But the way I see it is that if I'm a program director for, let's say, a rural program, and I see this application and it says no preference, and I'm like thinking, hmm, okay, so he has no preference, he's willing to go anywhere, versus I pick up the application and I see strong preference and I'm like, oh, he does want to be in an urban and a rural setting. However, yes, he also wants to be in an urban setting, right? Which is almost the same thing. Had I clicked no preference and no preference, it means I'm open to everything. And if I click strong preference and strong preference, it means I have a preference for everything. So it's essentially the same thing, but I just think it's better for a program to see that, hey, he has a strong preference for me versus just having no preference. It's, it's a little bit more passive. So I'm going to leave that for you, up to you guys if you want to go for no preference or strong preference, but I chose to go for strong preference. Then give them reasons why. Why do you choose to have a preference for each area? Or why do you choose to have no preference whatsoever? For me, I just decided to list one pro for each setting. 
Next, we go into you know, which programs that you're applying to. Um, here you get to send your signals to five programs. So these are five programs that, or in my case, 10 programs that will see that I've sent them a direct signal that I am interested in your program. Whereas all the other information from the previous pages goes to all of the other programs that are participating in the supplemental ERAS application, okay? Sure, they don't get the signal that these five or and these five get, but they get to view the other information. And then next, you go over here. Would you like to submit your supplemental ERAS application? Yes or no? As well, I want to make a quick note. The, I am making this video on Sunday, September 19th, meaning it's the last night that we submit this application. If you are viewing this video, it means that it is past September 19th, meaning that programs will receive your supplemental application on October 6th, not on September 29th, which is the first day that programs get to view your ERAS application. Best of luck, everybody. I'm about to click next. This is going to submit my application. If I have anything more add to add to this video, I will. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you guys next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah.